In this video, I have a comment from Mustasar Mufid. He says, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam. Bilal, thanks for the video, very informative. This video is actually a comment on uh, the, my video in which I was comparing the Sony ZV E10, the M6 Mark II, and the GH5. Saying, uh, I have a question. Uh, I have a kind of a studio set up and I shoot in front of a green screen. I'm shooting using my uh, phone, which is a pixel, but for several reasons, overheating and not seeing myself, I need to switch to a camera. Which one do you recommend for such a setup? Uh, such a setup. Highly appreciated. Okay. So my recommendation, uh, so a couple things. One, you may want to consider if you're open to it and maybe it's worth exploring. Uh, the, uh, there is a cooling fan and device. There is a cooling fan and device uh, that is used, that you can use to cool your Pixel. Now, this is something that I've used on occasion. In fact, this is something that came in really handy for live streaming. So whenever I would live stream using my phone, uh, the challenge was that uh, the phone after about 30 minutes would overheat. I know with the iPhone, that has not really been an issue with anyone that, I, that has used the iPhone uh, for that kind of streaming. But for whatever reason on the Pixel, after about 30 minutes of streaming on something like StreamYard, uh, the phone would overheat. So to address that, I got myself uh, this cooling fan. Now, the upside is that it's going to work, but you have to take your case off. And so uh, that takes care of that. But then you also still run into the issue of not being able to see yourself. Now, in order to address that, you could, because you're using like the main camera of the phone, uh, you could place the phone itself in front of, um, uh, say, something reflective like a mirror or a glass have like a glass board behind me that sometimes I use. And so um, if I'm making a note and I want to record, I might record like as such. Right. And so right here you can see the reflection. Um, so that is one option. I mean, this thing is about what, 20 some dollars. So it might be worth considering. I think it's a good accessory to have regardless. Now, um, if it's, if this is something that's not viable for you because of the kind of work that you're doing, you want something dedicated, something reliable, I would recommend, uh, getting the Sony ZV E10 Mark II. Uh, now, uh, this camera here, uh, right now has the, uh, a Sony Zeiss 28 millimeter F2. Uh, it's a good lens, but for your setup, I don't know what kind of space that you're in, but I'm going to assume it's something similar to a home office. This here is being, is, uh, we're recording at, um, uh, 24 millimeters. So if we were to look at something that's 28 millimeters, uh, or not 28, uh, or 50 millimeters, for example, you would get something that's close to this at, uh, 28 millimeters, but this is what 24 millimeters looks like. Now, if I were to step back all the way over there into the back of the room, uh, uh, you probably get a full, almost a full body shot. You can see like, uh, the floor, um, right back there. So if I were to stand up, you'd probably get the full body shot. That thing behind me is just about six feet tall, if I'm not mistaken. That, uh, divider lamp thing that I said in the back. Uh, by the way, this is the new home studio, moved into a new place. And so this is actually my first video uh, from this location. Uh, I'm liking the setup. Took me a little bit to kind of figure this all out, but that's besides the point. Um, so, uh, so the Sony ZV E10 Mark One, not the Mark II, the Mark One. Uh, and if you go to eBay, uh, you will find that this camera goes for uh, uh, there's been a massive price drop. And the reason for that price drop is because the ZV E10 Mark II has come out. And, uh, with the Mark II, the Mark I's price is going to be lower. A lot of people trying to sell it, uh, and so on. So, um, this is a good time to get that. I think you'll, it'll probably cost you less than $600, but you still got to get a lens. The 50 millimeter F1.8 Sony full frame FE lens is a good lens to have. Um, it's sharp. It's, it's clinically sharp. In my opinion, I've used it on several occasions. Um, it's going to be clean. And so, uh, and you want a clean, sharp clinical image, especially when you're dealing with something like green screen. So, uh, that's probably going to cost you less than $200. It's 250 brand new on Amazon, but even on Amazon, if you get it used, it'll probably less, it'll be less than $200. Now, the good thing about the Sony ZV E10, uh, over say like Canon, uh, uh, within the budget range that you're talking about is that you'll have a, uh, a USB-C port uh, right here. So you can actually uh, 
operate your camera and power it through the USB-C um, and you can also charge it from here while using the regular battery. Now in my case, I'm actually using a, um, a dummy battery for that I use for my V-mount uh, batteries. I got one of these over here. Uh, this setup actually goes really well, uh, in my opinion, especially for long form content. And um, now, but having this setup would probably put you over. Uh, so this right here, this solution uh, together, I'll just typically plug the uh, this setup right as such. All right now, I've got um, all day battery on this thing, and this will probably last me like good seven eight hours easily, um, if not more. Uh, the thing is, uh, this battery here is going to cost you about a hundred bucks. This bracket here to mount the camera onto probably another um, hundred or so dollars. So. You're already looking at $200. What I'm recommending, don't worry about all this. This is fancy. This is maybe next level. Uh, but just start, get, get the camera, camera by itself, not the cage, just the camera by itself. Costs you about $550, maybe $600. The lens about $200. Um, I don't think you should, I don't think you should pay more than maybe $550 for the Sony ZV E10. And you should not pay more than $200. Maybe you pay less than $200 for the 50 millimeter f1.8. It's going to be plenty bright. You can even stop it down to like, um, uh, a f2 or f2.8 and it's going to be super sharp lens super clean image um, and the other upside of the sony is that what you're doing is you're getting a 4k image no well, not actually you're ending with you're starting actually with a 6k image that's being squeezed down to 4k i've mentioned this before in a previous video and so you're going to get a really good really sharp 4k now the other thing to also keep in mind uh, when you're shooting with a you know with a mirrorless type of camera or any camera for digital video and you're green screening, any visual effects person will tell you that they look for three things. Uh, they're looking for a lack of motion blur. They're looking for sharpness in the image. And they're also looking for uh, uh, a decent amount of color depth. Now, in the case of the Sony ZV-E10, you're going to get 8-bit color, which is not that big a deal, especially with green screen. If you're doing simple stuff like replacing a background, 8-bit is plenty. Um, what you're going to get is the resolution and you'll also be able to adjust the shutter speed appropriately, assuming you've lit yourself in your background right. Because we're talking about having the appropriate amount of light because you're going to be going, you're going to be breaking the rule of the 180 degree shutter. In the case of green screen video, the faster the shutter speed, the better because there's going to be less motion blur. And so it allows for better chroma keying. Uh, and uh, the best way to look at this is that, so typically in a 180 degree shutter, now with the cameras uh, on a, let's say you're shooting 24 frames a second, that would be one over 48 or one over 50 because they don't do one over 48 and because they're photo cameras really. Uh, if you're shooting in uh, 25 frames per second, one over 50. If you're shooting 30 frames per second, then one over 60. That's what's 180 degree shutter. But if you're gonna be shooting at say a 90 degree shutter, uh, which is double the shutter speed, less motion blur, then you're looking at 1 over 120, 1 over 125, uh, or a 45-degree shutter that's 1 over 250, right? Now, the faster your shutter speed, the more light you're going to need. Uh, so this is the thing that you need to take into consideration. Now, in my case, with green screening, 1 over 125, um, at 24 frames per second has been plenty, has been good. Um, if I can shoot 6K, I will. Uh, but if not, that's okay too. But that's the thing that you need to keep into consideration. But a Sony camera with Sony lens, uh, 50 millimeters, um, you can power that thing while you're operating it. Uh, oh, you're gonna also wanna get an SD card, probably cost you about another $35. So you're probably still within the budget. That's my recommendation. I hope that has been helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll see you soon.